Wow, stories. Am I the idiot for refusing to share a room with my stepsister? I'm female 15 on a travel team for soccer. Usually when I have a game, I go with my dad, but this one is during spring break. So my dad, stepmom, brother 13, and stepsister 9 are here and we came two days early and are staying three days late. I like my stepsister, but she's high maintenance. She has nightmares and wakes up screaming. My stepmom has to spend an hour every night putting her to bed. She has accidents at night and she acts like she's five or six, not nine. We rented a three-bedroom house for this trip, so my dad and stepmom got a room, my brother got a room, and I'm supposed to be sharing with my stepsister. On top of her being normally high maintenance, she also has bronchitis and wakes up coughing in the middle of the night. The first night she ended up sleeping in my dad's and stepmom's bed, and I really liked having the room to myself. Then the second night they put her to bed in my room, I hated having my stepmom here for so long and having to be quiet after seven. Her bedtime is eight, but at seven they start bedtime stories and my stepmom lays down with her and rubs her back and they want me to be quiet so she could calm down and go to sleep. I was FaceTiming my friend and ended up waking her up, so I told her to go to her mom. Then I put all of her stuff outside and locked the door. My stepmom took her to sleep with them, then came to yell at me the next morning because I didn't want to babysit her kid all night. She was going to take me and my stepsister out to eat and shop after my game, but she ended up skipping my game to take her instead. She ended up buying a tent and an air mattress for my stepsister, and she's sleeping in their room, but my stepmom is still mad at me, and my dad thinks I was rude and would have sucked it up for a few days. Am I an idiot for not sharing a room with my stepsister? Not an idiot. All those things are your dad and stepmom's problems, not yours. The purpose of the trip was for your game. Your performance should not be impacted by having to deal with all this other stuff. Also, if your little brother could get his own room, they should have made sure you had your own room as well. You're an idiot. Your question is disingenuous. You didn't just not share a room. You didn't want to share a room, so you intentionally did loud activities while she was asleep. Then when she inevitably woke up, you threw her stuff out into the hall and locked her out. Not wanting to share a room? Reasonable. Calling someone else high maintenance, and then being the one to throw a childish hissy fit for not getting your way. Ah. Uh, now, for the next story. Would I be an idiot for asking my sister to not bring her doll to Easter? I, female 37, have a sister, female 34, who has had a lot of grief recently. A year ago, she lost a baby to trisomy 18. This was hard on her and her husband, and they ended up divorcing, and she has had a very hard time coping since. To cope with the loss... She purchased a reborn doll, one of the super realistic baby dolls meant for people who lost, can't have children to dress up and care for. I think it's very creepy, and maybe not the best coping mechanism, but she's in generally better spirits since she bought it, so perhaps I should shut up. The problem is that she insists that the doll is real, and that's where I come from when I say it's not a healthy coping mechanism. She's brought it to family gatherings and will change it, pretending to feed it with a bottle full of water. She even drives it around in the car seat bought for her deceased child. I've asked her to do things with me, but there have been at least two occasions where she's declined because her doll was sick. I have not said anything as this is a very sensitive topic, but other relatives have expressed similar sentiments to what I'm writing here. I have been tasked with hosting Easter this year. I want my sister to be present as I love her very much, but I want her present without the doll. So maybe she will focus on the family that is here, and loves her instead of the doll. The thing is that it asterisk is asterisk a coping mechanism for two horribly tragic events in her life that happened very recently. Even if it is a bit strange, I wonder if I have any real ground to stand on to ask her to not bring it outside of the standard my house my rules argument. Would I be crossing the line or is this totally fine? Would I be an idiot? No idiots here. But trying to ban the doll is not the answer. She needs therapy. Badly. And while you can't force her to do that, trying to force it is not the answer. Your heart is in the right place, but it might be better to approach her about therapy first. No idiots here. But what is most alarming is that she truly believes it's real. That's a very scary delusion that if left unchecked, can develop into something much worse. This isn't about Easter dinner. She really, really needs therapy. And I know you said she declined, 
so I would talk to a professional and see what they suggest. For the time being, though, maybe just let her bring it. Now for the next story. Am I the idiot being upset with how so handled vet appointments? I recently noticed something concerning going on with my pet. Nothing crazy, but enough to warrant a trip to the vet. The issue is that by the time I get off work and on my day off, the vet is closed. I asked my SO if they would take my pet to the vet for this specific thing I was concerned about and they said yes. There have been instances in the past where my SO will be doing me a favor and will deviate from the plan and make decisions for me that I didn't ask for, that often lead to costing me more money than planned, such as taking my car to the shop for me and then agreeing to additional work that it probably needs but I did not want done. I know it comes from a good place, but I don't appreciate decisions being made for me, especially when I am the one financially responsible for them. Leading to the vet visit, we talked about what I was concerned about, what was being done, what I had arranged the appointment for. I reiterated these things in a text and said, please call me if they say anything else needs done other than X, Y, and Z so I can make the decision myself. They said, okay. A little while after the appointment, they told me what the bill was and what all the vet did. The bill is almost double what I had been quoted over the phone, and there were several tests and a shot given that I did not ask for or agree to. So says they misunderstood my text about not allowing extra work without checking with me, and says my text message did not mention the specific testing I was okay with, so they agreed to all the extra testing and the extra shot that came with testing. I did not mention XYZ testing. I did just say testing, but we talked about it previously, and the specific testing I was okay with was literally in the text message one up on the thread. I'm upset they made a decision about my pet and my finances without calling me. They said it's a simple misunderstanding. Am I an idiot? ETA. At the end of the day, it's thankfully not an amount that's going to break my bank, so I'm just letting it go. It was just really frustrating in the moment to feel like I went through all the work to explain what I was and wasn't okay with and for it to feel like I was ignored. But ultimately, I'm just thankful for the help getting my pet to the vet. Also, if it's relevant, the pet is solely mine. This is not her normal vet, just one that had availability to see her the soonest. She will be going to her normal vet for her routine work and vaccines when I'm able to schedule some time off, which is why I only wanted certain things addressed at this appointment. Not an idiot. To everyone saying that OP is the AH, it's pretty common sense that unless it's an emergency, you don't make major decisions on behalf of someone else's loved ones or finances. And OP should have a partner that does understand that. It's not that hard to understand. Now, if SO had tried to reach OP to ask what was okay and OP couldn't be reached, that's a different story. Not an idiot. I don't get what the SO is thinking, but it might be about control. But clearly they can't be trusted with anything involving money, so it's not looking great future-wise. I'd expect them to pay back every extra cent. Now, for the next story. Am I the idiot for buying a PS5 for my daughter when my ex asked me not to? My ex and I have a 14-yo daughter together. She also has two more kids who are male 16 and female 11. We have 50. 50 custody. Here is the problem. My daughter loves gaming. She has been begging her mom and I to buy her a PS5. I bought one for her a few weeks ago, but I didn't give it to her right away. I decided to wait until after an important and difficult exam that she had and give it to her as a prize for getting an A plus in that exam, which I knew she would. A few days ago, my ex called me and asked me not to buy a PS5 for my daughter, as apparently she has been gloating to her siblings and making them jealous because their parents are financially struggling and they can't have as many privileges as my daughter. My ex gave me a long lecture about how she doesn't deserve another privilege because of her behavior. I told her I will consider it, but I didn't promise anything. Well, she got her exam results a couple of days ago, and not only did she get an A+, she was the only A+, in her grade. I was extremely proud and decided that she deserves getting her new PS5 and gave it to her. Yesterday I took her to her mom's home and a few minutes after I left, my ex called screaming at me asking me why I did it when she specifically asked me not to do it. She thinks I'm a huge idiot for doing this, but I think as her dad, I should be able to decide what my daughter does or does not deserve and my ex doesn't have the right to tell me what to do. Not an idiot. Your ex's situation is not your or your daughter's to manage. 
You might want to have a chat with her about gloating over her half-siblings, though. That's toxic behavior that should be nipped in the bud. You're an idiot. Not for getting the PS5, but for your terrible communication. When she asked you not to give her the PS5, you should have said you already bought it and planned to give it to her. You also should have talked to your daughter about her gloating and bragging, and let her know it would be taken away if she acted like that. You are a parent, and you do get to make parenting decisions, especially regarding what your daughter does and has when she's with you. But you still have an obligation to at least try to work with your daughter's mom. You're on the same team.